Hi, it's product review slash unboxing slash first impressions time. We've got a desoldering station, vacuum uh, suction desoldering station from an Australian company, rhinotools.com.au. Picked this up on eBay for about uh, for $190 delivered, complete with uh, various tips and things like that. So that's really dirt cheap for one of these uh, proper desoldering, uh, gun type desoldering stations. Now, normally, I wouldn't get a cheap soldering tool like this because I'm always telling people, you know, buy, when it comes to soldering tools, buy decent quality brand, not just some rebadge. Uh, no, this Australian company, Rhino Tools, I'm pretty sure they don't design or manufacture this. It's probably an OEM from somewhere. I don't know who uh, the original equipment manufacturer is for this one, but uh, maybe we'll find out by opening the thing up. So yeah, like I've um, done videos on like having a cheap uh, hot air uh, gun, for example, uh, you know, a hot air gun, for example, and well, that's okay, because not much can go wrong with a hot air gun, but something like a soldering iron, I'm always telling people, get a decent quality brand name, and also for a desoldering station, normally I would recommend that as well, because these things uh, have to be reliable, they've got to uh, work well, their parts have to be uh, readily available, um, and you've got to maintain them, so you've got to buy a good brand, but I'm a tight ass, and something like a good Heiko, for example, which I'm uh, used extensively, I've always had these at the companies I've worked at, I've never had one in here in the lab, because I haven't had much uh, use for it, quite frankly, I'm not into the repair side of things, so very occasionally when I have to suck out a chip, eh, I can get by with, you know, just one of these crappy little uh, suckers, solder wick, uh, wide tips, for example, for my soldering iron, and I get by. But I thought uh, with the DSA coming up, um, I may have to, the repair of that, I may have to suck out a lot of chips, so I thought it's about time I got a decent desoldering station. But I'm a tight ass to get something like a Heiko 470 or an Heiko 808, for example, which are, you know, classic industry standard, uh, ultra, super reliable, work well solder, uh, desoldering stations. They're about 600 plus dollars in Australia and up. And because they're fixed voltage, you can't just import them from the US. And well, you can't get them easy second hand here. So against my better judgment, I bought a cheapie. But the good thing about this is that uh, it does have cheap consumables, and that's the thing you have to watch out for, for desoldering stations. Like uh, they've got uh, filters, for example, as we'll see, they're only like a dollar or two dollars to buy the spare filters for this thing. Uh, the tips are only like 10 bucks or something like that. Even the entire gun assembly itself is only about 30 bucks. So really cheap uh, consumables available locally for this and uh, spare parts. So I thought I'd give it a go. Fingers crossed anyway. Let's go. All right, let's crack this sucker open. And uh, the thing about it, it does claim to have better uh, suction than, say, a Heiko uh, 808, for example. This one claims uh, 600 millimeters of mercury, which is the uh, units of uh, pressure. Rather unusual, but that's what they are. There we go, we've got a couple of boxes. And um, the Heikos are like uh, 500 or something like that. So. Uh, from memory, so there. Uh, this one claims to have better uh, suction, but you know, um, d yeah, it, it probably does. I've seen uh, some videos of this thing in action, and it does seem to do the business, of course. But uh, whether or not it does that over the long term, because these things, yeah, will almost certainly work out of the box. You know, guaranteed, it'll do as it uh, claims. But um, long term, so we won't be able to get an impression of that from this video of course, but anyway, we'll check out the general quality, we'll take it apart, and uh, instructions, don't need that, and uh, here we go, we've got, look at that, oh, it's a bit bigger than I expected, it's actually quite sizable, I was uh, hoping it would be, I, I expected something smaller, it's not heavy at all, it's um, 80 watts uh, capability, um, 80 watts, uh, you know, uh, heating, uh, power on the element, which is more than enough. Uh, so it should do the business there. And uh, this will be the gun. Complete with, it'll have two cords on it, of course. There it is. Uh, one is the um, power, of course, for the element and uh, read back the uh, temperature, because this has a dual display on it. Uh, one for set temperature, one for read back. So presumably it's got the sensor in there. And uh, the other one, of course, is the air. There it is. 
there's the air uh, for the uh, suction. So this has an internal uh, vacuum uh, pump in it and a uh, uh, heater for the soldering iron. Feels a bit, feels a bit cheap. There's the trigger for it. You know, cheap and plasticky. Pretty much what I expected though. So 80 watt desoldering gun looks very similar to the, how do you push that? How do you get it open? Let's have a look. Do you have to push it in, push it up, push it down? Yes, I read the manual. You've got to push down on... Ah, there we go. I just didn't press hard enough and it pops out. Our tube out, which collects our solder. There we go. It's a bit rough and ready. Um, but, yeah, I mean, uh, these all operate very similar to the... Uh, um, you know, the Hakos and most other uh, brands. They've got a filter in the back, of course. The suction comes through the back, so they've got an O-ring on the back there. Um, you should be able to get O-ring replacements for that, of course, because the, uh, the vacuum, the suction in this is only as good as the O-ring seal on there. Um, sometimes, you know, if you really want to improve it, you can apply some uh, grease or something like that inside there, and that can um, help with the seal. And then they've got a spring here, which helps uh, capture... Uh, the solder, of course, because when the solder gets sucked in, and the reason it's uh, metal like this is when it gets sucked, the molten solder gets uh, sucked in and then it touches the metal and the heat uh, dissipates, of course, it cools down very quickly once it touches this metal and then it gets captured in there and you take that out and you clean the whole thing out after um, uh, you've uh, been using it for a little while. But these things have to be maintained. So really, you know, the way that all this sort of stuff operates and uh, the reliability of all the parts in here are key. So this thing does feel very plasticky and uh, cheap. I'm not that impressed with it, but for the price, I, I wasn't expecting uh, to be impressed, uh, really. But the good thing is it's really, really light. I mean, I, I could weigh that, but yeah, it doesn't weigh much at all. So fatigue for long-term use um, shouldn't be an issue at all with it. And with this, I got uh, one spare main filter down here for the main, um, uh, for the input to the unit. You generally don't have to replace that often because it doesn't get through the filter, which is in the back of here like this. So they give you three of those. And I've got two different size tips. I believe one's uh, 0.8 millimeters, one millimeter, and 1.3. So those three size tips should be more than adequate for all the jobs. And then I've got three different size tip cleaners here because uh, uh, you don't always just have to take this out to clean. You just uh, clean the shaft and things like that occasionally just to get some gunk out. And these look uh, pretty good. There you go, we've got some nice looking knurling on the end of those. I'm sure that uh, helps out. Nice attention to detail, I like that. I'm not really impressed with that seal around there. You can see the O-ring doesn't actually go all the way into the tube, even though I'm pushing that in. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't get a good vibe from that. It is, this thing is really, you know, engineered down to a price. And it is specifically branded uh, Rhino Tools, and the model number is ZD985, not uh, RT985, as I said before. So we should be able to find uh, this, or that particular model number, under many different brands, I'm sure. Well, what do you know? I googled ZD985, and what comes up first? The EEV blog forum. Somebody's already done uh, some teardown uh, photos and a little uh, review of this thing. And uh, yeah, they said it's, you know, it's decent for the price. Uses a switch mode uh, transformer inside, hence the light weight. I was very uh, surprised at the light weight of this thing. But it is, um, as I said, quite, um, you know, quite a large unit. Compare it with my um, Aten, um 858 uh, hot air station here is significantly deeper, significantly higher, significantly wider. But of course, uh, you'd kind of expect that because this does a little bit more than that. Now, the first thing I notice, this thing just sits in this plastic holder like this. You get a nice little sponge tray here. That's all right. But uh, this thing is just held into this plastic here with this clip. And I put that in and, well, okay, it holds in place. But then when you go to put the gun in, and put pressure on that. If I just put the barest pressure, I can just bend that flat. That is that is hopeless, really. That is just just awful quality. Um, that is not going to last at all. You know, you have to be very gentle not to put pressure on that. It just bend down, and that thing would end up just snapping off. And well, yeah, not happy with the holder on this thing at all. Very cheap, but hey, for my 180 uh, bucks, I'm not going to complain. 
too much, I guess. I'm not going to use this. I would so I wouldn't flat out just for that sort of thing and the you know the plasticky feel of this thing. I don't think it's going to be good for really high volume uh, use. So if you're in you know a proper repair environment where you're sucking stuff every day, you know spend the money get a real brand name. But it should be adequate, hopefully, for my uses. So let's crack it open. And by the way, no, you can't put this on either side. It's only got the uh, slots in there. Nothing on the other side. Not dual purpose. Uh, why? Come on. Could have at least made it dual sided. Just a quick check to see if the tip is uh, earthed here. Not all of them are. No, this one's not, even though I can see a, an earth wire inside there. The uh, green and yellow earth wire strapped onto that. No, um, it's not. I mean, that doesn't mean anything really. Some uh, soldering tools are, some soldering tools aren't. You just want, need to be aware of it. Let's take a look inside this thing. We've got two screws on the top, um, two on either side here, and should, ta-da, just pop off. All very flimsy, look at that front panel there, flimsy plastic construction, no metal, I mean, you know, we've got a metal base on the thing, uh, a powder coated metal base, but that's about it, so really not much uh, doing there at all, but you can see, there's our uh, mains input, we do have earth wire going over here, it is, uh, uh, they've got a shake proof washer on that, yeah, I think they do, um, going over to the uh, metal um, shield on the switch mode, uh, transformer in here, as I said, um, a bit surprised, I expected sort of a linear uh, transformer, but Eh, you know, whatever. Here's our uh, pump, obviously, down here. There's our motor. Not sure, I'm, you know, I'm not going to go in there and uh, take that apart, but, you know, I'm not sure of the quality of uh, pump motors and stuff like that. But anyway, um, I'm sure it does the business. And I'm not sure it's tacked on the back here. That's uh, rather unusual. Held in place with cable ties, and we've got a front panel display board, which is nothing special, really. It's just got a microcontroller down in there, not going to do a full tear down of this thing, not that fussy, but you know, it's okay, they've uh, cable tied things together, sort of does, you know, it, it does the job I guess for the price, but yeah, it would have been nice to get a nice, you know, solid metal chassis on this thing, but unfortunately not. And no surprises on the microcontroller down in there, just a uh, Jelly Bean 805 one, so they don't have to pay the royalty on that sucker, saving every last cent they can here. And although there's no uh, sound dampening around the motor here, they have actually installed it on rubber compliant uh, anti-vibration um, mounts there, so that's a bit of attention to detail. I'm not sure how uh, uh, loud this thing is, um, I guess we'll find out when we switch it on, but uh, yeah, they've at least done the basics there. I'm not sure if that is going to, you know, uh, rattle against the, the two metal uh, parts there. There's a bit of rubber coming out here as part of the uh, seal, the top seal in there, so that could be touching that, but anyway, if you do get uh, vibrational mode issues of that, you know, touching the metal in there, you maybe could put a bit of rubber down in there perhaps to maybe uh, quiet that thing, but We'll find that out when we power it up. You probably can't see it, but they've uh, grounded, uh, earthed the outer shield of the um, main connector going to the handpiece, but the actual ground itself is that black wire in there which actually goes up and into the uh, output of the power supply down in here. So as we saw, it's not actually mains earth reference on the tip itself. I tried to get that connector open there, but uh, it wouldn't budge. I'm not sure if it's just pot if it's potted it or celastic inside, or just whether or not it's a very tight fit. But it seems uh, it does seem rugged enough, that's for sure. And uh, likely, as we saw, because they're uh, gone to the trouble to run the earth wire through to the casing of that, then the outer, then they've probably got uh, shielded cable in here going up to the uh, heater element. And of course that's important because this is going to be a triac controlled uh, heating element of uh, some arrangement. So you don't want this thing, uh, this cable, this huge antenna cable spewing out all that RFI. So they've done the shielding right. And sorry but I'm not going to tear down the uh, power supply in here. I can see two main filter caps down in there, 2200 microfarads, uh, 25 volts. Can't make out the uh, brand of those. They are Celastic together so that's a bit of attention to detail but yeah, I'm not quite uh, 
sure of the quality of the power supply. I'm just, you know, I don't want to take this whole thing apart to find out. And this little black box on here is the uh, pump uh, motor drive here. So they've got uh, these two wires go off uh, down here to uh, through the uh, cable through to the trigger down in there. So, meh, internal construction quality, you know, I mean, eh, for the price it probably passes mustard, but uh, not much more. Let's switch it on here and see what we get. Nice green backlight, powers on quick, and there we go, there's our dual display uh, set, the, the uh, temperature, it's actually uh, heater, heater on, waiting. No, it's not, uh, it's not heating up at all, and uh, set 200 and 26 you can switch between Fahrenheit and Celsius for you Yanks and uh, the screen looks good at this angle really quite nice but you bring it up and it's gonna vanish and the bottom angle as well yeah pretty horrible it just fades out sideways yeah it's a you know it's okay, but yeah, not the world's best LCD, that's for sure. It goes from a minimum of 160 up to 480. They've actually stuck the sponge down in there so it doesn't come out. This is the cheapest, crappiest uh, solder sponge well I think I've ever seen. Ah, oh, that's, yeah, that's just hopeless, really. And I do enjoy a new sponge, it's just quite satisfying to... Uh, Pour the water in there and watch that sucker rise. Woohoo! Uh, folks, we have a real problem here. I mean, I've got this thing on and, uh, you know, it sucks or tries to, but of course the uh, tip hasn't, uh, uh, it's got solder on the end of it, so it's just uh, um, not open yet, but uh, that, it's not heating up. What? Heater on? Yeah, great. Ooh, there's no protection on that, but um, heater on, I'm waiting. There's an error, uh, there's actually, I can see like an error mark, error uh, display there. It's not showing any error, but it's not heating up at all. Why? What a heap of crap. Watch this. It resets when I pull the bloody trigger. What the frig? you got to be shitting me. And if my hunch is right, that's because it's, of course, uh, sealed. And uh, if we pop the seal off the end so there's no uh, so it's open it probably won't happen that'll be my guess yep there you go but it's push that in get the, look that nice seal on there and the thing resets it's like there's you know a back emf from the motor or something shutting down the supply and and resetting the thing if it if the motor's working too hard unbelievable and i open it back up and you know what i see the problem look at that that wire has come off the output connector because this whole thing bends like this, just bends and flexes like that. The wire, that is piss poor. Look at that. It's just come off the um, handpiece connector in there. Unbelievable. And on second thought, I really don't like the case construction. I had the captive nuts in here fall out of these things and... Well, yeah, they do at least have uh, machine screws and nuts in there, but it's sort of, you know, there's nothing actually, there's just friction stopping that whole front panel from just falling off. I don't like it. All right, after I've done a repair on my piece of shit brand new desoldering tool, um, let's power it on and see if it works. We expect a, a fresh nozzle like this. We expect a bit of uh, smoke to come up off it. And uh, 25 heating up. No. Hello. Oh, yeah. Yep. There we go. Jeez. Not the world's fastest. But, uh, yeah, certainly not the world's fastest. Creep, creep, creep. So if you just want to do one um, joint, you know, or a couple of joints, you want to just switch it on. Eh, this ain't the beast. That is, wow, that is dog slow. What's that? I can hear the cows coming home. I'm sure if you can see that, but we've got our smoke wafting up there we expect that as the solder melts and uh wow yeah that is unbelievably slow come on suck through nope it's not sucking through the tip fail 
Have to give it a poke with the cleaner, I think. There we go. Jeez, there wasn't much force in. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we're up and running. Woohoo! And the temperature's not dipping if I leave that on, but let's uh, see. Let's, well, desolder it. Try what it's intended to do. All right, I've got myself a nice big uh, through hole board here from a uh, UPS, I think it. Uh, was from anyway uh, but some nice big thermal mass uh, components in here we'll try and suck out uh, these transformers big inductor down there some relays you know we've got a d9 down there and then we've got some dip packages over here we can uh, desolder all right let's give it a go i've got it set to uh, 300 uh, celsius of course the temperature you need to uh, set it at it's going to depend on the thermal mass of your pads your thermal mass of you know your thermal recovery of your uh, gun and your nozzle and everything else you know there's lots of factors involved so there's no one set temperature you know you, you I can advise you to use these things that really is trial and error but suffice it to say the lower temperature the better you can get away with then you're uh, less risk of uh, lifting pads and things like that so anyway let's get this sucker on here and uh, let's try out these I think I've got my one millimeter tip on here I'm not sure does it fit it fits and there we go give it a bit of a wiggle and whoa straight out there we go no problems at all we are working against gravity here of course um, we're sucking the solder up, but that that melts pretty darn quick. That's at 300 here. Sorry, I'm trying to work around the camera. It's not the best, but that's just... Put it on there. Wait a second. Give it a bit of a wiggle and... Oh, no problems whatsoever. I rather like that. Yep. That does the business. Excellent. Just like any Hako I've used. You'll see that our component has just fallen out there. There it is. Bang! Just dropped right out. Beautiful. Not a problem. That was a reasonably, you know, reasonable size thermal mass um, pad there. So, yeah, I'm, off the bat, I'm, I'm quite impressed with that. It does what it claims. And, uh, yeah, in terms of uh, wattage and uh, suction going against gravity there, not bad at all. So we finished that off there. I think that's our inductor. Our common mode choke there. And... Uh, this sucker is only set to 300, so I'm really quite happy with that, and that should just uh, pull out from the bottom. Yeah, it just drops out, no problems whatsoever. Ta-da! Okay, we've got ourselves a little D9 here with some pads, and really is incredibly quick. Sorry, it's not the easiest trying to work around the camera here to get that off, but... Uh... It's almost right. Oh, there we go. Lost a pad. Lost a pad, folks. That's what happens. I think we lost one. So, you've got to be very careful. Don't apply too much when you're putting it down and then wiggling it around like that. Don't apply too much pressure. Otherwise, you do or you will lift the pad. Oh, no, we didn't lift the pad there. I'm just looking through the lens from my other angle. The uh, light showed that I lifted a pad, but I didn't. And now we've got the... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be able to get over the top of that, but let's try and see what it does if we get near the edge of that. See, I just marked that board there. Try and get in there, and yeah, that's not bad, but of course we're not putting it right over the thing, so we can't expect to suck all the solder out of that. No, that's not going to work. This is where your uh, solder wick, or for unusual shaped um, pads, you know, unusual shaped legs like that, you, that you can't get your round nozzle over, you're probably better off with your um, solder wick or with your, or just uh, heating it up and then wiggling it out once you've got all these off. Alright, let's try and drop out this uh, transformer here. So I think my tip just fits over this so you know something like a 1.3 millimeter tip is probably going to do the business for most things and that's just really sucking that out very nicely very quickly I am uh, impressed with the thermal capacity of this thing it seems to easily do the business let me tell you and the vacuum it's pretty good working against gravity here sucking it up 
because sometimes you know if you're really desperate you might need to hold the board upside down and uh, do it that way to uh, let gravity help you so the solder falls out but there you go beautiful and ta-da there it is too easy Okay, let's try a uh, TO220 heatsink like this. We'll have some pins for the uh, heatsink and also the pins for the TO220, which will be a piece of cake. Let's see if we can drop the whole thing out. Somehow I don't think we're going to get over the pin on that. Yeah, my tip isn't big enough, so this is the heatsink. I've currently got it set to uh, 325 degrees, and uh, so not hugely hot. And so the heatsink itself isn't working too well. Of course, we'll suck the legs of that. Okay, they're like instant, but we'll probably have to turn the wick up to, I don't know, let's go to 380 or something like that. Because we can't get a big enough tip, well, we don't have a big enough tip to go around it. So let's wait until that heat pad heats up and uh, try and suck around it. No. Of course, we can uh, hold the heatsink on the bottom. Something like that. We're probably better off, we might even put some solder back on there, but we're probably better off just heating the whole thing up and then pushing it, giving it a little push all the way through rather than trying to suck it. Give it a push. There we go. Gone. Retrieved intact. Perfectly. Look at that. We can reuse those. And I'm going to see if we can actually drop out this uh, PLCC package here. Let's give it a go, see how long it takes. There you go, that took under three minutes to suck that out, even with a bent pin and some, you know, a bit of wobbly work because I was all oh, standing up, not in the best position. But there you go, that worked, an absolute treat and virtually no damage whatsoever. So that was done at uh, 300 degrees C, had no issues, that's beautiful. And a dip chip. This dip package isn't going to come out easily. It's going to depend on how big the sol the uh, holes are, the hole size on the board compared to the size of the pin. Usually, you know, if they're quite small, you can actually get them attached. Uh, even if you suck all the solder out, you know, the pins can be touching. The so that's not a fault of the uh, solder sucker at all. That's just the uh, dimensions of this particular board. If we get our uh, screwdriver under there, we can actually, this one is pretty easy. We don't have to wiggle individual pins. Just needed a little bit of a crack there to uh, lift that up and yep we're out and there you have it a perfectly reusable TL074 yeah the pins are going to have some um, extra solder coat on them but look at that almost like a bought one and uh, there's no um, you know damage to the leads or anything like that there's no thermal or very little thermal stress was done to the chip certainly no uh, thermal damage so there's very reusable. So you can easily suck all the parts off this uh, board or any board uh, you want through whole stuff and uh, put these parts back in your parts bin to reuse them. I mean, uh, you know, not as good as brand spanking new ones, not absolutely guaranteed, but uh, certainly, uh, you know, good enough and certainly when you're in a pinch. I think we need ourselves a header socket. What do you think?
winner. Even sucking out electrolytic uh, caps like this takes a couple of seconds, even at 300 degrees C on a large ground plane like that. Not a problem, just pop straight out. This is a Nippon Chemicon uh, electrolytic capacitor. Certainly reusable if this uh, unit hasn't seen much uh, stress. That'll definitely go in the parts drawer. Let's try our hand at a big uh, aluminium heatsink like this with some TO220 devices on it. Unfortunately, I don't think um, our nozzle is going to be wide enough uh, for the pins on this. So, uh, But uh, we can certainly uh, get around it and drop it out just like we did on the TO221. There you go. In the end, the biggest uh, problem there, I forgot to take off the plastic clip on the top of the heatsink. I was wondering why it wasn't uh, falling out. Oh, but there you go. Um, beautiful. We've got ourselves um, three MOSFETs there. Certainly reuse those. And uh, they're the large pins that went in. Of course, my tip couldn't uh, go over that. I didn't have it. You know, you probably need like a two and a half millimeter tip or something like that round one to go over the top of that but just sucking around it and then just uh, uh and then putting the heating up the pad first and then putting the nozzle down and just pushing the heat sink uh, the pin through not and then sucking out the solder not a problem like you know less than a minute done there you go that's quite a decent little swag of uh very reusable components in next to no time at all would have been a lot more difficult and a lot more uh you know, uh, time consuming to and more damaging to take them out with my uh, traditional solder and iron. You've got to wiggle one pin, wiggle the other, and all the all the solder sucker. This just makes it so easy for salvaging parts and things like that. It's worth its weight in gold if you're into uh, re-salvaging stuff. Let alone, um, you know, if you have to do rework a lot. And how about the Molex power connector on a multi-layer motherboard? Let's give it a go. There you go, that was an absolute piece of cake, although not as easy as the uh, two-layer board because there's thermal capacity in the inner layers in there and it depends how they've done the, the PCB layout. Uh, designer has done the thermal relieves to the pads and stuff like that. So on a multi-layer board like this, you might turn the temperature up to say 350 and you might leave it there for a little bit longer just to penetrate to the inner layers. But yep, yeah, um, I didn't fail on that. That one just dropped straight out. And we'll try some of the uh, capacitors on these large ground planes here, but once again, also going into the uh, multi-layer down in there as well. So we'll have to leave it there for a little bit and uh, then give it a bit of a wiggle and no, didn't get it. You really have to leave that there for quite a bit longer than you would for a double layer board, that's for sure. And that didn't work that great at 350, so I'm going to turn this up to say uh, 380 and uh, give that another go. Because obviously we're connected to the top plane there, it's probably an inner plane, and uh, yeah, we really have to uh, really have to heat that up. So you want to leave it there and then give it a good good wiggle. And yep, I think we got that one. Ta-da, that one is going to pop out. So yeah, we did have to leave it there for a fair bit longer. And there is, uh, of course, the chance of um, heating up the components more than uh, you would on a double-sided board. But uh, certainly, um, this uh, multi-layered motherboard really didn't present any problems at all to this sucker. It's still got more thermal capacity left in it, that's for sure. Oh, and by the way, the uh, cable on this thing, um, it is fairly, fairly uh, supple, so it, you know, it doesn't really uh, twist or, you know, drag you around the place. So I, you know, I don't mind that at all. You know, you don't want a real big, heavy, stiff uh, cable that doesn't really bend with your iron, because that can be annoying. And before you uh, turn the power off and put this thing away, just get your cleaning tool in there and just unclog that whole thing like that. So after sucking off all those parts there, that is what we're left with in terms of the filter. Look at that. Um, not, you know, it's it, it's still usable for quite some time. And there we go. We can just peel that off. And, uh, of course, some of the filter material comes with it, of course. And uh, But it's still uh, certainly usable after you just peel off that top there and... That is almost like a bought one, so you can use these a few 
times, I mean, I, I could have kept uh, using this. Of course, you would just keep using this until uh, you're, it's obvious that, that your uh, sucking power is going down, but we can certainly reuse that filter. It's just like putting in a new one. So while we have a reasonable amount of solder in there, there's, uh, this can certainly uh, take a lot more than that. You know, probably like a, you know, two thirds full or something before uh, we're gonna, you know, stop getting decent suction. I mean, I didn't notice any drop in suction uh, right at the end there, as I got at the that I actually got from the start. So really, you know, not a problem. Um, we can suck out probably every component on that board and. Uh, with you know, uh, without having to clean this once, the best way to get that solder out is just to sort of you know crack and loosen the spring at the back like that, and hopefully that should uh, allow the molten solder to well drop out of that thing. Well, it will eventually. Might need. To, there we go. There it is. Ta da! So there you have it, that's the Rhino Tools uh, ZD985, almost certainly available in um, you know, other brands, probably a similar part number or maybe a different part number. If you do find this exact model under a different uh, part number, please leave it in the comments so we can add it in there. But well, what's the verdict? Well, you know, you get what you pay for uh, pretty much um, in terms of build quality. I mean, look, it's straight out of the box it failed. I'm not sure uh, the wire popped off. I'm not, because I didn't power it up out of the box, I'm not sure if it was me taking it apart and maybe, you know, bending that front panel a bit that caused that solder joint to come off, but it shouldn't have cracked. I mean, you know, that's it should have taken that easily. So obviously it was a dodgy solder joint inside this thing, which is a shame because, well, that just left a bad taste in my mouth, but um, in terms of, well, you know, the build quality inside is adequate apart from that issue. Um, I don't like the stand at all. The stand is just, uh, it's just flimsy. This feels flimsy, but it is lightweight and it seems to work. I was a bit worried about the seal around here, but um, in terms of suction, of course, in terms of thermal capacity and suction, this thing is as good as the Heiko's I've used. Um, it, it, you know, it really is. Whether it continues to be that good um, given time, I don't know, um, but you know, if you keep the things uh, serviceable, and as I said, the uh, replacement parts for this are very cheap. You know, a dollar for the filter and other stuff, and even this whole gun assembly is only like thirty bucks um, Australian. So you know, pretty damn uh, cheap. So um, well, I'm certainly not going to i give it a thumbs up for build quality, but in terms of functionality, for under $200 for a desoldering station, it does the job. I mean, I didn't even have to turn the wick up. I was doing most of that at 300 degrees. This will go up to 480. Um, the thermal capacity, the temperature on the display didn't seem to drop uh, much at all. The thermal capacity seemed to be, you know, more than adequate for, uh, you know, a decent uh, chunky um, size board with some heat sinks and uh, things like that basic um, through hole uh, work that you can expect to do with this thing so yeah I I don't know you know overall it's an adequate it's you know it's a thumb sideways it's it's adequate for the job I wouldn't give it a thumbs up purely because of the uh, you know the quality control issue in there with the solder joint that's no good at all maybe I just got a dud unit you know the EEV blog curse um, but yeah I mean for my use um, it, it should be pretty good here in the lab, um, you know, long term, I'll let you know how it goes, but geez, I, I was uh, quite impressed with the performance of this thing. Thermal capacity and suction, not an issue whatsoever, equal to or outperforms the uh, Heikos and the Pacers that I'm used to. So, pretty happy for my money, apart from that issue where I had to fix the bloody thing. Anyway, there you go. Oh, you know, I uh, tried to be a tight ass, and well, yeah, I got tight ass issues, didn't I? Now, I haven't uh, surveyed the market uh, for these things extensively, but is there a competing uh, one like this, um, you know, in this form factor? I think you can get like a combined station and soldering iron. Uh, I don't recommend those, of course, I still recommend buying a good quality uh, soldering iron, but uh, for a desoldering gun, which usually doesn't get too much work, as I said, for the occasional use, this thing should do just fine. But if you are, uh, you know, had a, you know, a repair house, you're using this thing every day, don't get one of these. Buy, you know, a proper Heiko or uh, some other known reputable uh, brand. They're just going to last much longer in my experience. So anyway, if you want to discuss it, jump on over to the EV blog forum or leave some YouTube comments, whatever. Catch you next time.